Cheers is filmed before a live studio audience. Okay, little bee buddy. Here comes dinner. Equal parts sugar and water. Can you blame him for loving it? <laughs> sure nobody wants to help? No, they're all yours, Woody. Okay, but you haven't lived till you've heard the soft, warm, contented hum of a well-fed hive. That's not it. Those bees loose in there? Well, there's nothing to worry about. I'll just go in and round them up. My Uncle Fergie sent his beekeeping gear in one of these boxes. I uh, don't mean to be an alarmist or anything, but I think I saw one of those bees fly out when he closed the door. I, uh, well, I sort of have this thing about uh, insects. Relax, Fraser. Last thing that bee wants to do is sting you. Stings you, he dies. True. Unless, of course, it's one of those rare rogue bees. Oh, Fraser, there he is. He just flew down your shirt. <laughs> It was just a piece of lint. Well, thank goodness you told me before I made a fool of myself. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Damn, I am good. Bring these people on. I'll wipe up the floor with them. Who are they, anyhow? Well, actually, they're friends of friends. Yeah. But I have to warn you, they're the essence of the Y word. That's the yuppie word for yuppie. Are you implying that I'm a yuppie? Oh, forgive me, I erred. And if I ever do it again, you may cut out my tongue and serve it to me in a fajita. <laughs> hey, Doc, what's going on? Well, for one thing, I find myself batching it again. So let's finally blow our brains out? No. But uh, thank you for asking after her, Carla. So where is the lovely Dr. Stannard? Well, she's in Albany for a few days attending a conference on uh, gender stereotyping. Gender stereotyping? Yes. It's unfairly attributing certain modes of behavior exclusively to one sex. That sounds kind of boring. Why'd she go to that? Who knows? You know women. <laughs> a little early for that, huh, Doc? Well, maybe you're right. Cancel that double, make it a single. Oh, skip it all together. No, on second thought, you know, make it a single little extra in it. <laughs> Fraser, what's your order? Cup of coffee. <laughs> you got trouble? Well, I've, I've just been invited to deliver a, a paper at the State Psychiatric Convention this week, and I've got a first-class case of the jitters. You know, I, I have a, a surefire way of keeping yourself calm. Picture your audience naked. Oh, well, thank you, Carter, for that old chestnut from Speech 101. Now, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. I got a twist on it. Picture him naked and wearing black socks. Oh, Carter, that's ridiculous. I can't see that that would... <laughs> I told you it works. Okay, now try this angle. <laughs> now shut up. <laughs> you know, I do see your point, though. That could do just the trick. Thank you, Carla. Sure. Oh, here comes a likely candidate. Try it out on her. Hello, Dr. Crane. Miss Al. <laughs> so it doesn't work with everyone. <laughs> oh, Sammy, mind if I cut out for an hour? I want to catch the last couple of innings of my kid Ludlow's t-ball game. Hey, I thought he was the intellectual of the family. He's into baseball, huh? Well, he didn't go willingly. I had to trick him. I used the old going to the library but running out of gas in front of the ballpark routine. That seems kind of drastic, doesn't it? <laughs> Come on, Sam, please. I don't want the kid growing up to be a soft, doughy wimp, wearing an argyle sweater and smoking a pipe. <laughs> well, you poor working stiffs gonna <laughs> hang around here and... Breathe the stagnant city air, not me, boy. I'm, I'm gonna go climb a mountain with Aaron. You wanna give me a hand with this here, please, Fred? Sure, sir. You know, Sam, I admire you, actually. Yeah. I think most of us live such sedentary lives. You're out there taxing your body. It's, it's quite an inspiration. I know, Frazier. Make me stop. <laughs> I tell you, man, I, I can't catch my breath anymore. 
I mean, all my muscles are beginning to form a conspiracy to kill me because they want to get some rest. Here, here, here. Let's get you out of this. Oh, Sam, if all this strenuous exercise is taxing you that much, you know, perhaps it's time to face the passing of the years and learn to deal with it. What do you mean? Admit that I'm 30? <laughs> I wouldn't suggest anything that drastic, but uh, maybe I ought to just, you know, slow it down a bit. Hey, Sam, you ready to go? Listen, Aaron, I think... Oh, good one. Uh, could you do me a favor? Sit down here. Uh, listen, sweetheart, I, I'm not going to go uh, climbing the mountain with you. What's up? I guess I'd better be honest with you. It's just that all this physical activity we've been engaging in, it's just too much for you. <laughs> Come on, I'm a guy who likes to go, go, go. And, uh, sweetheart, you just slow me down a little bit. I'm sorry. Sam, I'm really kind of relieved to hear you say that. I guess I need to go and find myself a guy who wants to just join me in a nice hot bubble bath and lie in bed with me all evening. See ya. <laughs> Gee, that was uh, sort of ironic, wasn't it, Sam? some more cake and ice cream in there for you. Yay! Oh, Pinky, you were wonderful. Oh. I must admit I was a bit worried at first. It took us quite a while to warm up to you. Yes, well, thank you, kind lady. See, actually, I have a confession to make. Uh -huh. I'm really Dr. Fraser Crane, practicing psychiatrist. Clowning is my avocation. And Miss Howe, I will be sure to mention to my husband the splendid work you did on this party. Thank you, Mrs. Ridgway. Now, if you will excuse me for a moment. You have no idea how lucky we are. That was Woody on the phone. He called to check up on us. That handkerchief is a trick handkerchief. If you would pull that out of your pocket, your pants would have fallen down around your ankles, and then we would have seen those skimpy underpants. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> well, that's not the half of it. You see, I took off that little French torture device that Lilith got me earlier today. I've been doing this al fresco. <laughs> Dr. Crane. Would you come here for a moment? I'd like you to meet my mother. Why, yes, I'd be delighted to. I've heard such wonderful things about her. <laughs> Go on, time, madam. Here's my handkerchief. No! <laughs> Father! Father! Like you lost another one.